Hello and welcome to the final film in a series of six about the standard level kinetics topic. Here again we're going to be looking at factors that affect the rate of chemical reactions but whereas in the previous film we looked at uh, factors that would affect how often particles collide, here we're going to be looking at factors that will have changed the chances of a collision being successful or in other words um, factors that will affect how much energy collisions have. Okay, so hopefully by the end of this film, um, you'll have used collision theory to explain the effect of temperature and catalysts on the effect on the rates of chemical reactions. But in addition to collision theory, we'll also tie this into kinetic theory, and we'll try and relate these effects to our understanding of these curves that we covered in the fourth film called Maxwell-Boltzmann curves. Now, if you don't know what we mean by Maxwell-Boltzmann curve, or you've forgotten what you what you watched in the fourth film, we I haven't even seen it, it might be a good idea to go and watch that before you start this one. But what we'll do to begin with here is we'll have a look at what collision theory told us about um, energy in chemical reactions. So we know that collision theory says particles have to collide, but it also says that they have to collide with enough energy to reach this activated complex, or transition state as it's sometimes called, or in other words, to ex enough energy to exceed this activation energy so that they can turn into products. Okay, now if we have a look now at what kinetic theory says, we'll be looking at these Maxwell-Boltzmann curves, and we can mark on a Maxwell-Boltzmann energy distribution, we could mark an activation energy, that is to say, a minimum amount of energy that particles need in order to reach the transition state, or activated complex, or in other words, to react. Okay, now remember on a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, energy is on the x-axis, not on the y like it is in an energy level diagram. So I could mark some energy that I think that particles need in order to react. Now obviously this would have a numerical value, okay, but I'm just marking it at some or arbitrary point on this axis. Right? Now, if I consider which particles, and let's just focus on the cold sample for now, okay? So we haven't increased the temperature just yet, but we're focusing on here on how temperature is going to affect the rate of a chemical reaction. So in the colder sample, I can represent the particles with enough energy to react by this shaded area under the curve to the right of the activation energy. Because all these particles here, remember the area under the curve refers to a total number of particles, okay? All the particles here have at least this much energy, and therefore if they collide together, they're going to react. Okay? If I warm my gas sample up, or any sample up, what happens to the kinetic energy of the particles? Well, the average kinetic energy increases, and what is more, there'll be more particles with higher kinetic energies. So in other words, there'll be more particles with enough energy to react or to exceed the activation energy. And how can I show that on this graph? I can shade the area under the curve to the right of EA. So the higher temperature, we can see that the total area is bigger than it was at the lower temperature. Why is that? Because the kinetic energy of particles is increased, and so the overall percentage of particles that have enough energy to react has increased. Okay, and if you've got a higher percentage of particles with enough energy to react, then there's a greater chance that collisions will be successful, or in other words, lead to a reaction. Now, if we look at what catalysts do, again, we can take this back to our study of energetics, if we've done it, okay, and we can consider what does a catalyst do to the energy in a chemical reaction. Well, we can see that if normally the activation energy here, represented in red, so that's the size of the hump between us getting from reactants to products, if it's normally that size, well, if we add a catalyst, remember, uh, what a catalyst does is it provides an alternative route for the chemical reaction to take place. And this new route has a lower activation energy than the other route, Okay, which means that particles will find it easier to react if they collide, or rather, they'll, have, they'll require less energy when they collide in order for a reaction to take place. And once again, we can represent that on our energy distribution. Okay, So um, these symbols here aren't anything to worry about too much, but we've referred to them in the previous film. This is the most probable energy. This is the root mean squared energy. So in other words, it's a little bit like an average, but don't worry about it too much, okay? because these things aren't going to get tested. But if I have an activation energy, say here, when I don't use a catalyst, 
I could compare that to the activation energy when I did use a catalyst. Now, if I'm asked to do this in, in so I'll just put EA cat here. If I'm asked to do this in an exam, I don't have to put precise values on this axis. I just need to know that the activation energy with a catalyst will be lower than the activation energy without a catalyst. Okay, and again, I can start shading the areas under the curve here because the area that is under the curve to the right of the red EA is clearly smaller than the area under the curve to the right of the green EA. So in other words, by adding a catalyst, I've increased the percentage of particles with enough energy to react, and therefore a greater proportion of collisions will lead to a reaction. There will be more successful collisions per second. Now then, just like we did in the last film, we're going to just, before we tie up here, we're going to just say how it is that we're going to avoid chucking away marks. In other words, how it is that we can turn an answer that sounds like we know a bit about what we're talking about into an answer that suggests we know precisely what it is we're talking about. Okay, so with temperature, what's happening? Well, particles collide more often, right? But as, an, uh, as you might discover in the HL topic, that doesn't have much to do with why temperature increases rates of reaction. By far the most important thing is the fact that the percentage of particles with enough energy to react increases. Before, we emphasized the fact that it's important not to just say that more particles have enough energy. Okay? So again, it's not about more. Right? It's about a greater, percent, greater percentage or a greater proportion of particles. Okay, so a greater percentage of particles have enough energy to react or to exceed the activation energy and therefore successful collisions will happen more often, not just more collisions. Okay, successful collisions or that is to say collisions with enough energy to lead to a reaction will happen more often. Okay, so talk about frequency of successful collisions rather than just more collisions. Okay. With catalysts, what happens? Again, it's not about more particles having, having enough energy to react. Okay? Because this activation energy was lowered because we added a catalyst because it provided a different route for the chemical reaction, we've now got a greater percentage of particles that have enough energy to react or to exceed the activation energy. And therefore the frequency of successful collisions will increase. There won't just be more successful collisions. Okay, There'll be more successful collisions per second or per some unit time. Okay, So make sure that you're precise with the wording of your answers if you don't want to throw away marks. I haven't written all this down here, but make sure that you've got a note of it because it's really important to remember. Okay, that's it for standard level kinetics, and hopefully by this stage um, of this film, that is, you are comfortable about the fact that we can use collision theory to explain the effect of temperature and catalysts on the rates of chemical reactions, and you can do that precisely by talking about percentages of particles with enough energy to react. And you can relate these percentage of particles to your Maxwell-Boltzmann curves. That is to say, in an exam, you would be able to sketch what happens and you'd be able to shade the areas under curves to show what effect these changes are having on the rate of a chemical reaction. Um, this one's a little bit more complex I suppose than the previous film where we just talked about collision frequency okay but as usual if you've got any questions or comments please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.